Hello everyone. My name Hello. is Jan. This is where you say hi, Jan. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> and I love React. Anyone else? It's not everyone in the room. <laughs> I love React for how we can organize ourselves. I love React for its bindings to the DOM events. I love React for making my life easier. And I decided some time ago that I love React so much that I want to build a website with it. Now, React is brilliant for building single page applications, but when it comes to websites, it's a bit more difficult. Because if you try to run a React application as your website, then you basically lose every single bit of search engine optimization, everything for social media if someone shares it. The single reason is that for a basic React application, the only thing that you're actually sending from the server is the head and the body with the ID of the app. And everything else in it, all of your headings and all of your copy and all of your images, are added by React later on. And this is something that we don't want when we build a website. So some time ago, I decided to update my website and I found uh, this tool called Gatsby. And Gatsby is making websites with React. It's amazing how everything just worked out for me. Now I'll give you a quick tour of uh, my journey learning Gatsby and uh, I'm gonna focus on the things that I didn't found too intuitive because I found Gatsby very magical in all of the things that it does for you but there are th some things that are just not that clear from day one. So just a quick overview of how Gatsby works. You feed it any sort of data from almost Let's call it any kind of source. It can be data on your own drive. It can be data from a CMS platform. It processes everything through GraphQL. And then it spits out the data into your components and you build the page with React. So if you think about like the classic WordPress page builder where you are dragging the blocks and you're putting stuff in it and everything, this is the same thing but with code. And we do like code, don't we? So, as I mentioned, Gatsby is a website builder. Here's a website. It does all of the things that I need it to. If you go to a different route, it goes to a different route. If you go back, it goes back. Great. All of the things that we require from a website. Now, this whole thing is built with Gatsby at the moment. Uh, I'm still in the process of rebuilding it. Uh, I was hoping to relaunch it in front of you, but uh, there's still some things I need to polish out. But uh, to quickly have a look at how it's actually made. So, we start uh, with layouts. This is something that you have on every website, and you can see it in, in this case. Everything's a React component. We have a wrapper that gives us the basic layout, that the menu is on the left, the footer is on the bottom. And what's important is that these things repeat on every single page. Now this is generally something you want. If you have certain different expectations from your website, you can always overwrite this. But in my case, I want my menu to be visible everywhere and want my footer to be visible everywhere. So that's exactly this area here and the footer on the bottom. Now you can see some uh, more things uh, in there. We have a cookie container, because we have to these days. And I do have a cookie policy. We also have a container for the background. This is just the, can you see it? The colorful bits in the back. This is just like a topic on its own. It's a lot of fun to put characters actually as backgrounds, because this is not an SVG. And uh, first, gotcha when it comes to Gatsby. When you're in a layout component, children is a function. If you think about React, children is always carrying the node or the nodes below. 
In this case, it's a function for whatever reason. This is uh, soon going away. Uh, Gutsby version 2 is in beta at the moment, so you might actually just forget everything I said. V2 is coming soon. But uh, the cool thing is, I can make my components reusable, just like React promotes you to do. So all of the data for the menus and everything is taken through GraphQL. Fucking magic. Now, if you don't know any GraphQL, uh, fear not. It's not difficult to figure out, especially when you're dealing with such simple data structures. And Gatsby builds the GraphQL server for you. You don't have to build it yourself. So just to give you an example, uh, in this case, uh, we have the menus with the header and the footer and all of the data in it, which is then fed into the respective containers. And I can quickly show you, uh, in my case, uh, where's the content menus? In my case, I like JSON. If you like uh, any other data structure, go for it. Gatsby is basically able to consume anything you throw at it. There are plugins for almost any sort of data structure. In my case, this works for me. I find it readable. Uh, I'm actually able to convince even some of my clients to edit their websites this way. It just works. So this would be the layout. The gotcha in there, children is a function for whatever reason. Now, all of the children are then rendered, in this case, uh, from a folder called pages. So we have an index page, which is this one which holds some more containers that, again, show the data in, in any other way. What you're seeing now is this page. So you can see that we have the hero, which is this text here, and so on. Now, this is what I really like that I'm actually working with React, because I can have the hero container reused in every other page that I have. I just define it once. And if you have a look at the hero container, it's nothing too too exciting. And I can't, uh, where is it? In containers and hero container. It's nothing too exciting. In this case, it just returns the heading. But your page might be different. And you can build it whichever way you want in React. So the pages, again, can query data through GraphQL. In this case, I'm asking for the page that has the permaling of the root, which is the page that we're looking at at the moment, and querying all of the data on it. The title, the availability, whatever you want to show on that website. Once again, this is uh, in content, pages, index a JSON file. Now the best thing about this is it doesn't have to be a JSON file. It can be your WordPress implementation. It can be any CMS that you're using. You can always have a plugin for that and query the data from it, feed it into the page, and have it built as a static website. Now when it comes to styling, I mean this talk is really not about styling, but you can have uh, I like styled components, they do it for me, uh, especially recently when they added uh, the opportunity to have objects, because I can do this. This monstrosity basically lets me do anything I want to the text component. When it comes to styling, uh, there's another gotcha. Uh, I like CSS variables. I can have anything for text and backgrounds and stuff like that. And the reason I like them is without any additional boilerplate, I can have things like themes. So you can have the website in crazy mode, or you can have the website in the night mode, which I notice is much easier on your eyes now. This is fucking, yeah. Let's go this way. And the way that you can do this with, uh, CSS variables is crazy simple, because if you look at the uh, color theme, 
it's basically just setting the value for that specific CSS variable on the document and everything changes where it's using. So you don't have to deal with themes from styled components. You don't have to deal with this on the JavaScript level. This is just coming from the styles the way they, the styles were meant to be. This is just uh, a side note. But the reason I love React for building web websites is that it allows me to do these things. I don't have to build a JavaScript plugin that lets me do these things. Because everything is a component, and I can do whatever I want on that component. So for example, on, on the lab page, if uh, I press the key R five times, everything does a barrel roll. Great. And I can just have this as a, as a component. I don't need to build on top of whatever I'm having. This is just another component that doesn't return anything in React. And I can put it anywhere I want it to work. Now, all this is cool. CSS variables don't really work in Gatsby because Gatsby is using post CSS, basically post processing of, of CSS, and it strips them down and it fucks them up and it's just a fucking mess. So I basically decided to give up on the whole thing because uh, uh, that's in note, sorry. So you can adjust the configuration of Gatsby. In my case, uh, whenever we do any post CSS, I just return an empty object to it. Uh, I found it extremely painful to get the CSS variables working. Uh, I hope that this is going to get resolved in the future. If anyone's an open source contributor. Now, uh, since we are in this page, uh, not every single page has to be defined as a component, just like we had the index page. Some pages you might want to have generated. Imagine that you have a blog. So in this case, uh, my legal page, which uh, has to be this long these days, is a markdown document. I don't want to deal with this in JSON, because for this data structure, the JSON format is just not fitting. So this is a markdown file as would be all of my blog posts when I finally migrate them. And you can automatically generate everything. So you have this thing, which uh, is literally lifted from the documentation of Gatsby. You just update the GraphQL uh, query in here, and you build the page. Give it a template component, and you can see that if we go to legal, the page just shows. Now this brings issues with it, because Markdown generated gives you all of the components. Everything is basically wrapped in paragraph tags, and it's just a fucking mess again. So if, for example, we want to have uh, links, because if you want to do linking in a React application, you want to have something else than reloading the whole page again, like you would in any, say, PHP server. So in my case, I had to do two things. When we're rendering Markdown, I have to transform it on the way. So whenever we see an A tag, I replace it with my blog link, which is having its own logic if it's going out, if it's going internally. And also, in some cases, like, for example, here on the very bottom, very bottom on the legal page, this is coming from a JSON file, but it has links in it. You can see that Gatsby links and style components link and React links to something. And this is coming from a JSON file, but I still want to pass those links as if they were Markdown. So I had to build this ugly query that basically checks if it's a markdown link and replaces everything with the link that I want to do again. And it's these gotchas, again, that make it a bit more difficult to work with, especially when you're pulling data from different formats. 
they get transformed in slightly different way. I'm sure that because the way the Gatsby community works is that there's a plugin for everything. So I would assume that someone would be able to build a transformer plugin for getting stuff from JSON so that it passes the markdown links in JSON. It feels a bit counterintuitive, but it might be something that we, we benefit from. In my case, I had to build this monstrosity. Now, that's basically it for building a site. I'm not going to go through every single page and stuff like that. Uh, I want to show you how it actually performs. Oh, but before we do that, don't worry about the GraphQL. There's, uh, so every time you launch your, GraphQ, uh, your Gatsby instance, you can go to whatever you're launching it on, uh, three underscores GraphQL, and it gives you uh, the Graph IQL. So you can search and test your queries. So this is the one you've seen on uh, for the menus. It gives me all of the stuff from the menus, and I know that this is now correct, and I can use it in the component. This is something that's also a gotcha, because the GraphQL schema is automatically inferred from your data. So if you have something that is not the same in every single file that you're querying, it's just going to sort of choke up and give you that, oh, I can't find anything. So whenever you see that uh, this query would be empty, it's always good to check if, I don't know, let's say, in my case, what often happened to me when I was changing the meta uh, for the SEO in all of the different pages, I left out the uh, meta description in one of those, and the whole thing just crashes on its own. So again, not the best experience, but at the same time, it sort of enforces the consistency on you. Now, uh, when it runs, it runs quite nicely, and I actually had a, an audit here, which I'm not going to run in, f well, I mean, do we have time? Do you want to yeah, watch a lighthouse run? Let's hope it's fast. And also, let's hope that the Wi-Fi is good. Almost there. So the biggest benefit of having a Gatsby website is that you can build it with React, with all of the things that you know and love, and it spits out a static website. So something that you can do on any sort of static website hosting. It has all of the information in it already preloaded. It does split uh, code splitting automatically. It does... Uh, all sorts of optimizations. It does uh, progressive web apps. Uh, it does offline support. It does Google Analytics. You really don't have to worry about it. It's a plugin. You check it in. You can up. You can change it up if you if you want. So as we can see, the performance is great. Uh, in this case, something went wrong. Uh, this uh, page uh, usually gets a hundred on uh, on the lighthouse performance. Uh, it gets uh, very high scores, the green in, in everything, and this is before any manual optimizations. This is just out of the box, the, the way the plugins come. And I love it, because I'm a big fan of progressive web apps and, and everything, but service workers are so much pain to, to get right. And in this case, you have people that are smarter than you do it for you, and you just use it. It's great. One thing uh, I haven't shown, because uh, my website is very minimalistic, uh, are pictures. Gutsby does an amazing, amazing job on pictures. So this is uh, from a client of mine. And uh, there's this uh, client section with uh, photos of uh, whichever the clients are. And if you actually look at the code of it, Uh, you probably can't see it, but you can see that it's very long. The reason it's very long is that it gives it a full source set of responsive images. So if the image, if your screen is a mobile screen, the image is tiny, loads faster, doesn't uh, stress your network. If it's larger, it gives you higher uh, pixel density. It does all of it on its own. 
Now, uh, we need to go to a different repo uh, for this. And again, this is a plugin that is already figured out. Uh, you have an uh, image shop processor, uh, which is a C library, if I'm not mistaken, that runs every time you build the app. And you just ask, hey, I want this image. I uh, want this data on it. So in this case, I want the sizes. And I know that my screen is not going to be bigger than uh, whatever value you deem your biggest screen to be. And then we just ask for all of the sizes. It runs surprisingly fast. Like this uh, repo is processing close to 100 images, and it builds in about 20 seconds. Now, when we actually run it, you can see that we have an image. We give it the source set and the sizes. These are coming from the data from uh, the GraphQL query. Uh, you also give it a source, because uh, this is a bit of magic. If you've ever seen uh, Medium, the way they do uh, images, so it's blurred out. When it loads, it replaces it with the high-fidelity version. All of this comes out of the box, and in the image itself, I just spread it out, give everything to the image tag, and it does it on its own. I don't have to worry about it. I know that the values are correct because they are done by people that are smarter than I am. So this would be basically it. Uh, I would love to have a discussion or like a conversation about it for as long as we can. Yeah, I think we have like ten minutes. Fine enough. Yeah. And uh, if you're curious about trying Gatsby, uh, I suggest you wait a little bit because uh, version two is coming out. If you remember, I was talking that everything is in a layout and everything. This is going away. Uh, plenty more improvements on it. But it just saved me so much time, and I got to make a website with the technology I love. And I found it marvelous. Thank you. Oh, this one, that's very much not Gatsby, but... <laughs> sure. Um, that is not in this one. That is in this one. Uh, this one. So, basically, I'm creating a shit ton of spans, uh, depending on the amount uh, of the uh, whatever character that is I want. And I'm giving them a bit of randomness. Uh, what I found when I was testing this is, even though it's a ton of DOM nodes that need to be mounted, uh, they don't change. They only remount if you're changing the screen. Because, for example, if you look at, can you see it well on the dark background? Yeah? So if I go to the main page, you see that they change. If, you reload. if I reload, they change. So it's every time mounting. And even though in this case, I think it's close to 500 or something nodes, React does it crazy fast. We not, so the things that people always say, oh, you, don't, you shouldn't have that many nodes in React and stuff like that, it's usually when you need to update that specific one. This is why you have keys in React and everything. If you just need to throw a shit ton of uh, DOM nodes on the screen, it happens in instantane instantane uh, that one. And um, you can have this Gatsby dynamic Exactly. So this is, for example, what you see in this case. So Gatsby is giving me a loading uh, string. And in the availability uh, block, you can see that I'm just calculating uh, whatever the next availability is going to be and then showing it out. So if you load this website or the data that's coming from Gatsby says loading, but the client sees the number that we actually want.
Mm -hmm. I, I personally can't wait for uh, for the new release because there are some things that are really counterintuitive like the layouts and having children as, as a function and the best thing when it comes to this kind of breaking changes is that they really do document everything really well. When it comes to any of the major plugin, you have full documentation for it. All of the major plugins are kept in the same uh, monorepo as uh, the Gatsby core. So you get uh, the same kind of support on uh, the GitHub issues and, and everything. It Learning uh, how to use Gatsby took me a day. The learning how to do what I want with it was about a week of trial and error, left and right. And now with the change, I expect a day. So you mentioned, yeah, you have you have spreads everywhere, and like some things are hidden under the hood. And the direction for the library is actually going more transparent. So for example, in at the moment the layout, the menus and, and these things are automatically wrapped around everything. In the version 2, you will have to do it manually on your own. Which might feel like more work, but it actually gives you more control over what's happening at every single page. Which I would say is sort of like going away from the magic feeling of it, but of the it does the work for you feeling. Have you already been sued because of the name? Oh no. Rosilla. <laughs> this is my, my nickname from uh, back from secondary school and uh, okay. no one no one complains. Just good. Um, second question is uh, how many source lines of code is this one? I could calculate it if I remember the uh, bash command for that. Anyone does? From the top <laughs> of their heads? <laughs> that sounds like a, f a lot of fun to do on stage. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to show you uh, everything open. So this is uh, my components. And I do make a ton of components because I like stuff granular. Content. And this is uh, the client website, not my website. So this is something that's actually running on production. Pages, team, layouts, utilities, and that's it. It's not terrible. So you actually have more source code than an actual page. I would say so. And it really is the reusability which is sort of taken to the extreme. Like I could have hard coded everything into the page, but even if I use it once, I like to make a component out of it. Because the client might come with, oh yeah, this looks nice. We might want to add it to this other mm. page. Yeah, uh, when it comes to the data itself, really wherever it comes from. Because in in this case, it makes sense when it comes from uh, the disk. Actually, you might have an enormous uh, CMS running behind this with a ton more data, <laughs> which is still easily consumed by uh, this amount of components. Yes. So this is a uh, downside of static websites. Whenever you change something, everything needs to be rebuilt. Um, now, obviously, this is not something that you want to do 
every single second. Uh, if you're running any sort of an ACMS and you want to make sure that uh, your changes happen in a batched way, then uh, you would have to do, and this is sort of on, on the deployment uh, end. In, in my case, I love Netlify, not paid by them. And uh, in this case, whenever I uh, do a push into master, the whole thing redeploys automatically. If you want to do this on uh, the WordPress uh, level, let's say that uh, the rebuild happens every hour. Because uh, what you can also do with the, with the WordPress, you can have uh, previews with the live data that you have from, from WordPress. Yeah, I think the fact that you have to compile a whole site, it might not be true in the future. So let's say we, we know that uh, we make a change in the data and then we we know based on the source code that the data that is all is better. So maybe we compile all those, those changes. It's something like, you know, I've been playing with the idea but no one has implementation yet. But it's something that would be fun to do because we have like dozens and dozens of cases and it will take a while to... I mean, it, it only makes sense if, if you have thousand block pages and you make a change in uh, your landing page, then the blog posts should not all recompile and, and reload. But at the same time, since you're using GraphQL, you have very much control over where your data is going. So this is something that would be easy, sort of easy, yeah, I think would be the core of implementation. You know where the data is changing, so you only update that part. So I think we, in the future, we will see some implementation that does it every bit. So instead of doing like full compilation, you just use the init. Hmm. And this is actually where Gatsby sort of went ahead of, uh, ahead of its time, because using GraphQL to pull the data that you only need for that component will be exactly the thing that's going to be useful for only recompiling that specific component and nothing else. Anything else? Last one? How many pages can you, or like, if you have a really big website with, let's say, 10,000 pages, is Gatsby capable to do anything? Or like to compile them? Or is, it, is there a limit of pages? Or I've seen people complaining on GitHub uh, somewhere around 1,000 pages. Thousand. But at the same time, this might have been their own implementation of it, if it runs out of memory or something. Uh, I would assume that it's sort of infinite, because it doesn't actually hold all of that data in memory. It loads up the page, saves it to disk, goes on to the next one. So it, there shouldn't be that much of an issue with uh, a limit of how much you can do. It is, uh, if you reload, oops. Oh, hello, website. Ooh. I need to uh, remove the service worker. Is it hundred twenty kilos? Majority of that would be a React DOM. Also, uh, one thing, uh, you can force uh, Gatsby to work with Preact, if you like. So uh, actually, I used React to develop websites without, <coughs> without having React in the development time. So you can do entirely static sites, and then you can do progressive enhancement and all this. With the, but you can make, like, it gets very, it's a very different approach, and it's another natural response later this year, maybe. But, uh, yeah, let's just say that Gatsby is not the only option you have with React. Very true. If you if you don't like Gatsby, there's uh, uh, React Snapshot, uh, React Snap. Uh, what's the other one uh, called? I can post it in in the Meetup group, just as options to to explore. Hmm? Next.js is more of a server side solution. This is very much on the front end side, and it does all of that for you. In Next.js, you sort of have full control, but at the same time, you have to figure out a lot of shit. 
so yeah, I guess that's yeah, we got the crew. So thank you very much.